like an actual zombie or so it was a cancer but it was the type that you think because it got micro invasive perfect thank you so much for calling me I appreciate it okay amazing thank you okay bye Talk about timing, wow. That was crazy. <laughs> I've been waiting for that call for two weeks. <laughs> and then the second I'm talking about not knowing results, he calls me like, that's nuts. <laughs> I guess you guys were meant to go through that with me. Like, what the crap? That's not a phone call like I would have recorded. <laughs> but I'm like sitting here, so. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna need time to process that one on my own but um it was cancer but this specific type he said all the research he's done doesn't look like it comes back but i will need to like monitor to see if like any more lumps come but he was like very very confident that this is not something he thinks i'm gonna have to have more surgery or radiation or anything for he's really happy with the report just hearing the word cancer is so scary I'm gonna move past this <laughs> because I I definitely need to like process that. I still can't believe that just happened. Hi, I am alive. We made it. I recently went through a lobectomy. I had half of my thyroid removed. I decided to just like kind of film my experience. By me, it was mostly my mom. She's such a champ. I literally gave her my camera and I was like, hey, if anything feels like right to film, go ahead. And this woman said challenge accepted and was like a freaking videographer of the year. But you are seeing me post surgery i am doing great i had my surgery on the 13th honestly i feel like the scariest part was just not knowing anything so i wanted to just talk through this crazy adventure i just went through what started it all is a few years ago i was driving and i got a bug bite on my throat sent from the lord as i was itching it i felt some lumps in my throat so i went into the doctor right away had an ultrasound and she was like oh okay we need to get these biopsied because I had two pretty significant nodules growing on the right side of my thyroid. Your thyroid is like a butterfly and it just like sits there in your throat and it controls so many things. I got some biopsies and they were benign and they said, you know, we don't want to rush into surgery because surgery is going to look like taking that half of the thyroid out and we don't want to do that if we don't have to. So it was a couple years of just monitoring, having to go in for more biopsies, which were like the worst. But the size kept increasing at a rapid rate. One of the lumps started to come back as suspicious. So we sat and kind of had the final discussion of moving forward with surgery. Fun fact, if you remove half of your thyroid, most of the time the other half will kick in and do the job for your entire body. But sometimes if that doesn't happen, then you have to go on synthetic hormones um, to kind of like bring your levels back. I have some appointments next week to get blood drawn and just test all my thyroid levels to see how lefty's doing. The other thing we're monitoring is we still haven't gotten full. I keep saying we because like my family, my surgeon, my doctor, like it just feels like this big team, which I'm so thankful for. Still haven't gotten concrete results on if it was cancerous and if it is what type and how dangerous and all those things. So that's kind of like the brief update and now let's get into it. I'm giving you a trigger warning right now. Some of the footage was hard for me to watch. Let's just go to the footage. <laughs> my hospital PJs are clean. My sister and my mom got me like little pre-surgery goodies. We got some eye masks, a lip mask, and a foot mask. And then my mom got me a little mug and some hot chocolate. One of the things that the doctor or the nurses in my pre-op appointments told me 
is um, to get PJs that are button up. So I have this button up PJ dress from Target. I'm also packing some sweats and sweat shorts and like tank tops just in case I'm like hotter. I packed a ton of underwear. What if I like crap myself? Or have like accidents, you know? And then I got this matching little like sweat set PJs button up from Walmart. When I go tomorrow, I can't have anything on my body. No lotions, no serums, no nothing. I'm gonna take a bath, lather lotion everywhere, put on a hair mask, put on a face mask, and then go to bed. And when I wake up, I'm gonna rinse everything really well. And that way I can just go straight there feeling like super fresh and clean. And like, I feel like it'll like, Chill me out, you know? Okay, so I put all my clothes in my bag. I'm also gonna bring a pair of slides, my headphones, my iPad, so I can play my coloring game, trying not to have a panic attack, some toiletries, and then I'm not bringing a purse, so like, just like what I would have in my purse and chargers and stuff. I have to stop eating at midnight. It's almost nine o'clock right now, so I'm gonna have my, um, <laughs> My last meal, this is like my happy comfort food, and I'm gonna also try to chug some water um, because at midnight I can't drink any water till after my surgery. I think I'm gonna post up in bed, put on like a Disney movie or something, and just kinda like veg out. I'm gonna set my alarm for four in the morning. It's happening. Um, all right, I'll see you in the morning. I'm piercing free for the first time in like my mom's on her way right now. I think I've just been focused on getting ready, so I'm not really feeling anything yet. And I'm really tired because it's like four in the morning. All I want right now is to chug water and put chapstick on. <laughs> it's like all I can think about. I feel so dry. Mom Sears just picked me up. It's so dark outside and like cold and gloomy, which you know, it's not helping with the vibes. Getting to the hospital, I was definitely nervous. I tend to, when I get extremely nervous, I kind of like detach. <laughs> I'm like not there. So I was just like a zombie pretty much. I could not have done any of this without my mom. I was like useless. You're in so much pain. You're like nervous. You're scared. So it's just nice to have someone there to like help you with even little things. Like she like fed me jello and like helped adjust my pillows. Like she just was amazing. All the people came in, they did all the things. I got an IV put in, I got dressed in my gown. They don't let you wear anything. That was something mentally I was like not prepared for. I was like, why can't I wear my chonies? When they started wheeling me away, that was when I started to just be like, oh crap, this is happening. I got in the room and you know, like I'm just thinking about like Grey's Anatomy, like everyone's moving around and doing their job and sticking monitors to you and strapping your arms and it's just a lot. So for me, I just, kind of picked a focal point on the wall and I just like watched that he said oh I'm giving you a magic cocktail and I remember just being like I feel amazing and then the next thing I know I opened my eyes and I was in recovery I would like everyone to just look at me for a second if there's any potential suitors watching this please keep this in mind the next footage I'm gonna show you I've never been more unattracted to myself I look like a hot mess like I'm laying on the metal bed getting an autopsy done because I died here is me <laughs> um, unconscious Waking up from surgery, I remember I just kept saying, I'm gonna throw up, I'm gonna throw up, which was my biggest fear because like, I just had my throat like slit open. She like put something up to my mouth and I literally was just like, bleh, bleh. <laughs> so it wasn't as painful or intense as I thought it was gonna be because I was still just out of it. You did just now? Mm -hmm. No, when I was in the other room. The other room. Mm -hmm. Are you feeling sick right now? Mm -hmm. I, it was pretty rough. I was, I was, I was not very well. I had a really hard time opening my eyes. Try to open them. I'm fine. I do pee, but I would rather die. <laughs> they could put a little bowl down there. No. How are they gonna put a bowl in my there? They put it right underneath your bottom. Yeah, go for it. It's called a bedpan. Am I wearing a diaper? No. Oh, now I can put my butt, my hand on my butt. <laughs> Blue, they slice my neck open. <laughs> but like, how am I alive though? Because that's how you like kill people. 
but a doctor did this, so. Oh, yeah. He just stuck his hand in there. Ugh. This sucks. Also, my first time actually seeing my incision was kind of terrifying. How big is it cut? Maybe five inches. Five inches. Do you want to see it? Mm-hmm. Ew. That's, he sliced my entire neck open. What the crap? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> the incision was supposed to be a lot smaller, but one of the lumps was actually growing all the way into like kind of under my jaw. It was a lot bigger than he expected. So he ended up having to make the incision longer and really like get up in there. He kept telling me like, try not to cough, try not to like strain, and then telling us like the signs of hemorrhaging, which was actually terrifying thinking about that but they eventually released me all right this little girly has been in the hospital for 10 hours mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ma you are <laughs> she was a trooper nice job Thanks, ma. i literally was being wheeled through the lobby and people were staring at me with looks of horror on their face because i was stained yellow all over my body i have this giant gash i'm like wonky eyed can't even keep my eyes open that was interesting getting in the car the car ride home and then the first day was kind of a blur my parents have one of those like electric beds so like the feet can come up and the back can come up that was a godsend because i couldn't lay down for a few days. Taryn's new bed for a day. Mm -hmm. You're not leaving her side, are you? Hello. Oh, you. <laughs> Dang, that looks cool. Oh yeah, <laughs> got the chill. I saw you. <laughs> I think I underestimated how intense recovery was gonna be. Hello everyone. I am up. I am heavily drugged. Finishing day two, which day two was supposed to be the worst of all of it. I will say it was pretty rough. I'm definitely very like puffy and swollen everywhere, but so far no problems with the incision or looking like there's any type of bleeding, which is what I was supposed to be washing for. I'm gonna attempt to take a shower. I've been trying to wash this off my face and it's not coming off. And my entire body is like covered in this yellow stuff. I look rough and this double chin is kick in. I figured out that alcohol takes off the iodine and I've got most of it off. I still can't get this like mark from surgery off. I'm very paranoid about my incision getting infected, which there's no signs of that. It doesn't feel hot or like it hasn't gotten red or anything like that. Say hello everybody. Say hello. Hey, Jaja, are you over all this? If you've been dying to know how I clean my incision, I'm only supposed to clean it with water and I have to make sure it's completely dry. Can't really, for obvious reasons, fully stretch my neck. I put a cup in the shower with me, kind of like gently pour it across my incision. In the incision. I look actually insane right now. I'll just like fan my incision until I feel like it's fully dry. Take one of these and then down for the count. I would say like probably a good week to where I started to like be able to get some mobility in my neck and not have to be just so careful with everything I did. Yawning, coughing, swallowing, like hiccuping almost like sent me to my knees. All these things like involve the muscles in your throat. I was told I can't eat anything hot or hard. I did a lot of like soups mashed potatoes from KFC, eventually graduated to like some rice and beans. <laughs> Second I started to eat more solid food, I definitely felt it. Like it just felt like a pressure when I swallowed. And you can still see it's like pretty swollen still. Just a beautiful double chin I have now. Well, I've always had one, but you know, it's more intense. And I asked him why that was and he, this is a little graphic, sorry. But he was like, you have to remember, we peel, ugh, we peel your skin all the way up and they separate muscles. It's a lot of soreness that comes from just that process. My post-op meeting with my surgeon went really well. He ended up scrubbing the glue off of my incision. And then for some reason when he looked at it, he was like, mm, we're gonna like go ahead and put tape on it for two weeks. Changing that on my own, <laughs> was a massive source of uncomfort, but I did it and I'm proud of myself. And then now all I have to do is just make sure I'm keeping it extra clean. He said I need to start massaging 
my incision with vitamin E. So that's been interesting because I don't like touching it. It grosses me out. But you gotta do what you gotta do. I don't care about the scar. I feel like scars are just beautiful reminders of things that like you've been through and you went through and it makes a you. So I have no problem with it. I'm just glad that I'm like healing well. Still in the midst of figuring out just exactly what my body needs and what the next steps are. Getting that phone call in the beginning totally threw me. So I hope I hope I covered everything, but if there's anything that you're like, I would love to know about this or that, I'm gonna try to be super active in the comments. So yeah, same me, just with half a thyroid. What is life? I'm still tripping out about that phone call. Whoo, uh, okay, I'm gonna end now. <laughs> love you guys.